Welcome to the Teachers Need Teachers podcast, a proud member of the Education Podcast Network. I'm your host, Kim LaPree, and this is the podcast for new and beginning teachers who don't want to just survive those first few years, but actually thrive. Today on episode 56, I have yet another amazing principle for you. And as with the other episodes in this interview series, we discuss what he's looking for when he's interviewing candidates, as well as discuss tips on how teachers can better answer questions when they don't have a lot of experience. And I think you guys are going to find this particular episode useful and even kind of a relief because Rick goes into how to answer questions when you understandably don't have a lot of experience other than student teaching. And this is particularly helpful because you can frame your answers to highlight your strengths while still being honest about your lack of experience. So I definitely think that this is one that you need to listen to multiple times, especially the questions that he asks me in our mock interview. This is Lindsay and Kathy of Kindergarten Kiosk, a proud member of the Education Podcast Network. Just like the show you're listening to right now. The opinions expressed are those of individual hosts. Make sure you check out all the other great podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. And now the learning begins in... Three, Three, two, two, one. I have a special guest. His name is Rick Maureen, and he's the principal at Wingate Park Elementary in Charlotte, North Carolina. Rick and his school are dedicated to bringing project-based learning to their students and creating real-world experiences that will prepare them for any future they choose. You'll hear in this interview the awesome opportunities that Rick and his staff have sought out so that their young learners can see the career possibilities right in their own town. And of course, Rick interviews me and his feedback should reassure many of you new teachers who worry about your lack of experience affecting your chances of being hired. Here's my conversation with Rick. Because you are a STEM magnet school, is that something that you keep in mind when you're hiring new teachers? Are you looking for someone who will um, either have STEM experience or they can, they're willing to be part of that STEM experience as well? I think it's something that, um, well, we don't say like, oh, we're, we're only going to find someone who, who's been in, you know, previous, like previously in a STEM school. I think um, what we do look at it is like, hey, if, if we, if our, our model is around creativity, then, then we need to find creative people. Um, and we want people who um, are not afraid to do things a little bit differently. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people who are uh, innovative thinkers. Um, but I think that the most important thing you know, that, that we look for is, is before any of that with content is just, you know, we're trying to find someone who, who is going to be able to build strong relationships. I think that's the number one thing, you know, that I look for, um, that I've always looked for as I think about, you know, the time that I've been responsible for, for hiring teachers or even had a say in helping to hire teachers that, you know, um, that, that relationship building part is, is so important. And it's so it's so key, especially I mean, I think especially in the elementary um, uh, at the elementary level, but mm-hmm. but across everything like, you know, we need we, we need people who, who are going to build strong relationships with children, strong relationships with families uh, and strong relationships with their colleagues, because that's you know, that's going to allow us to thrive. And what does the interview process look like at your school? Do you have. Um, like a, a pre-chosen panel or are there certain teachers who are on the panel with you always or how does it work for when you're hiring a new teacher? Yeah. So, I mean, it, part of that depends on, you know, when, what time of year it is um, and, and who's available. Um, but in reality, you know, our, our, our main goal is to, uh, we, we like to try to narrow down, okay, we're, we're, this is the grade level we're looking for here. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we're going to bring that grade level in to be a part of the team and, and, You know, um, I think one thing, you know, when I say like, hey, I want your input, then I want your input, right? Like, um, I want someone that you feel comfortable with that you think is going to be a great part of your team. And so um, the panel is going to be different depending on the grade level. Right. Um, You know, so to be, you know, myself, my assistant principal, um, you know, uh, one of our academic facilitator, and then it's going to be team members. And, you know, I think somebody, 
once told me, or I read in a book, or I read in a book and somebody once told me um, that, you know, if you ask people for their input, you need to listen to it, right? Like, don't, the worst thing you can do is say, hey, give me your input, and then be like, well, thanks for your input, but I'm going to do this instead. <laughs> right. Um, and so, you know, everybody has an equal say, um, and everybody's voice matters. And in some ways, um, you know, I, I trust, you know, I trust my teachers, um, and I trust the people that are are doing the work to say, hey, this is what, this is who's going to be best for our kids. Um, this is who's going to be best for us as a team. Um, and then, then we're going to go forward together with that. And then once someone is hired, let's say that they're, especially if they're a brand new teacher in terms of they just got their credential, um, mm -hmm. does your school, your district have a program for like mentoring them or s sort of acclimating them to teaching? You know, in the beginning of the school year, you know, we have, uh, you know, kind of what I would say is like a new teacher boot camp um, mm -hmm. where all the new teachers in, you know, our, the entire district are going to be in the same place at the same time. Um, you know, which is, is a massive undertaking. You know, we're, mm -hmm. I think we're the, uh, I know we're in the top 20 in terms of, of district sizes in the country, Charlotte Mecklenburg. Um, and so, um, they're going to all go and they're going to be there together, but then they spend time here at the school and, you know, get, get, um, you know, onboarded to the school itself. Last year, you know, we, we did hire quite a few new teachers that were newer to teaching. And so, um, you know, we were able to sit down with them for, for a day and really share with them um, a little bit about, you know, who we are as a school. Now, part of that, I was actually sitting with the teachers because, you know, I was in that same boat of, you know, getting used to or, or learning about a new school. And so, mm -hmm. you know, I really depended upon my, my assistant principal to help with that. Um, but, you know, we and then after that, we connect them with a mentor. Um, and, you know, throughout the year, there are informal mentor meetings and formal mentor meetings, um, you know, but I think for um, a lot of our teachers, even if they weren't officially designated as a mentor, um, they end up serving as a mentor in one capacity or another. And, and, and I think that's um, that's one of the most important things that, that you can have in a building is is teachers who see their job not as like, oh, I need to officially be a mentor to support the development of this person, right. um, but rather say, hey, we want to help build every, you know, that, that idea of, you know, a rising tide will raise all ships, right? Um, you know, like if you if you have something to offer to someone who's newer to the school and newer to teaching, um, then then offer that to them. And then on the other side, making sure that we don't we don't make it a one way relationship, right? Like I have so much knowledge because I've I've been, you know, teaching for ten years or, or fifteen years. So I'm gonna tell you all about it. I can learn from you too. You know, even if you you may be brand new to this field, you're coming in with great ideas. You're coming in with this you know, kind of this fresh set of eyes. So, you know, we want you to become, um, we want you to share with us what you see and what you think and the ideas you have, because, um, you know, uh, the, the more diversity of thought we have, the better off we are as a school. Absolutely. And I think sometimes we underestimate what new teachers can bring to the conversation. And, you know, we, I think we take for granted the fact that they are closer in age to our students. They they know the pulse of what's going on, you know, in pop culture and and what's happening in in the lives of our students. I think that they actually are, are kind of a fun resource to tap into when I'm for me when I'm trying to make my lessons more engaging um, and meaningful and accessible to students so I can use any kind of pop culture musical references. I always hit up the, the newest teachers in the school for that. And I think that one of the things we have to do as, as leaders, and that doesn't just mean, you know, principals and, and assistant principals, but, you know, experienced teachers as well is make sure that that newer teachers know that, that they know that they have, they have all this to offer to the school and they, that they're bringing this to the table because I've seen, you know, it, throughout, you know, throughout my career, and I've probably done this as, as a newer teacher where, you know, you have a great idea that you want to share and you're just, you don't, you're afraid to share it, you know, and, and not just, not because someone is, you know, not just, not because you're afraid, but, or not just, not because you think somebody's going to do something or respond negatively. But I think just because there's this idea that like, oh, I'm supposed to stay in my place and I'm supposed to learn from these people who've been doing it for so long. Um, and in reality, I mean, whether we've been teaching for one year or, or 15 years, they're, they're again, I mean, we can all learn from each other. You know, we all bring something to the table. And so we want to make sure our new teachers know that. Um, and, and that starts by telling them that in the beginning. Like, right. You're not just here to take things in. We want you to be a part of the sharing too. And I know it can be difficult even as a veteran teacher. So sitting in meetings and 
even with your PLC or grade level team and in your mind you think you're right and and it's hard sometimes to to let go of that and to compromise but I think that's also something that we should model for new teachers is that we're open to new ideas which should you know hope, would hopefully make them more comfortable sharing their ideas so that they don't feel like well what do I know? I'm just starting out. You know, they, they just see things so differently. And I really appreciate that. And it forces me to, um, to think about my own ideas and reevaluate. I know that I'm not always right. (laughs) Yeah, I think, um, I mean, you know, I, I try to, you know, I think that that extends up, up to, you know, to myself as well. You know, if being willing to, to say, Hey, you know, that's a great idea that you, you've come up with this idea for, you know, this school event or that, and, and let's try that. You know, I mean, I, I think that, you know, the, the best thing sometimes, you know, it'll get you in trouble because you, you can overcommit, but I think saying yes is, is, is sometimes, um, you know, the best thing you can do because it shows people that, you know, that, that we can take ideas from everybody and that, and that everyone has a place in this organization and this, in this family, um, and it's not just, you know, hey, it's my way and only my way, but rather that, you know, hey, we're all in this together and, and we can all, um, you know, we can all help make decisions that are going to make this awesome for kids. Yeah. And then there's more buy-in. Exactly. Yeah. So if I were interviewing for your school, <laughs> what questions would you ask me? Um, the first question I always try to start with is just, Uh, tell me your story. So, you know, how did you end up here today wanting to become a teacher here at Wingate Park? So I started out as a band teacher. I taught um, elementary school band and middle school band. And when I moved, I moved to California. I then started out as a high school marching band director, which I did not want to do. But I know that sometimes when you're starting out, you just sort of take what you can get to get your foot in the door in the district that you want. And, and from there I did more middle school teaching in terms of band. Now about 10 years ago, I realized that I wasn't growing as a band teacher because I had lost my passion for it. So I switched over to English, which I surprisingly ended up loving and I was able to incorporate technology and be more innovative. And I definitely, jumped into learning how to be a better teacher once I was an English teacher. And so now I'm on this constant journey to improve myself in terms of my teaching and trying new things. About five or six years ago, I started my journey with standards-based grading, which was really difficult for me to switch over, but I found that it's the most equitable way to grade. And I've been working on working with other teachers in terms of helping them make the transition if that's how they want to grade. And um, now I also write a blog and I have a podcast. So I, I love hearing, you know, a story that that's kind of meandering as well, like similar <laughs> to mine, you know, someone who, who's gone through, you know, a, a, you know some different, um, some different places and, and some different um, roles and, and has, you know, um, allowed the, or used that as a, a way to help grow. So, um, you know, I, I'd really like you to take that into consideration as you answer this next question, which is, um, what's the best lesson you ever taught? And, and tell me why it was the best lesson. Okay, I had to think. I, I have a lot to pick from, <laughs> so I had to. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I had to pick one. So I recently did a lesson. Um, it was a project-based lesson with my students. And it was on writing for an authentic audience. So I set up a class blog for them. And what I wanted them to do, because this is part of their generation, the YouTube generation, I wanted them to write a review on something that they absolutely love. So I showed them examples of restaurant reviews or video game reviews, or um, I saw a review for different types of pens for people who like to write calligraphy. And I wanted them to pick something that they use or that they really could spend a good chunk of time doing actual live research on. And they were definitely excited about this because they had choice. So, and I think that's really important for students is to have some choice, um, not all the time, but to have as much choice as you can give them. And so they had to go and do actual research. So if they 
did video game reviews, I had to see, you know, clips or pictures of them actually playing these games and, and doing a review. Or I had a student who reviewed the different frozen yogurt places in our town. And he took pictures and I showed them how to choose criteria and have a rubric, just like teachers do. How are you going to grade all of these so that it's consistent across the board? And and it was a really eye-opening experience for them because they they've seen these types of of reviews like on YouTube or just even in blogs, but they didn't really know how much effort it took into it, you know, it took to actually do it. And they were able to use their writing skills because I teach English. They were able to use their writing skills. They were able to be a little more persuasive or argumentative when they were saying like which video game was better than the other. And it was just, they, they love the hands-on real world experience and showing them that they do have a voice that matters and that um, writing and learning can be really fun. So they, they posted their reviews on this blog and then I had them go in and comment on each other's reviews. So it was probably my students' favorite lesson ever. And I've been teaching for 17 years and I haven't seen them this excited or this engaged in a lesson. That that sounds awesome. That sounds like a, a great experience. And I mean, you know, thinking about, you know, kid, students leaving with, with some something that they can apply to the real world and, and experiences that instantly give them a voice, you know, um, mm-hmm. I think that that's amazing. So obviously, you know that that wasn't something that that was was easy for kids to engage in. You know, it took a lot of work and and a lot of time. So you know, obviously, uh, I would assume that you have some really strong relationships with your students. So thinking about you know coming here to to Wingate Park, um, you know, it's the first week of school. Can you tell me tell me what you're doing to help build those same relationships with their, your students? Absolutely. So one thing I can tell you that I'm not doing that first week of school is I'm not going over my syllabus or my um, school supply list. I think that a lot of students expect to be talked at the first day or the first week of school. And I think that's the wrong way to introduce yourself and your environment and your classroom culture to students. So I know there's typical icebreakers like, um, uh, you know, like games or scavenger hunts where they have to get to know each other. I do give them a couple of, you know, I drop a couple of classroom policies here and there along the way. I don't give them a piece of paper with all the rules listed. Um, I have them demonstrate some of those and and I, I go into the logical reasons in terms of why I have these classroom policies. And I just try to make them feel like they're part of it, not that they're walking into it and, um, you know, they're just kind of sitting there in those chairs in this classroom. I want them to immediately feel like this is their classroom for that particular class period. And I want them to get to know me as fast as possible. And I want to get to know them as fast as possible. So another thing that we do probably around the third or fourth day of school is I have them do sort of like a personal crest like they had during medieval times where they have to put items that represent them and their interests and their families. And then I hang those up immediately on the wall, number one, so they can feel some pride in in who they are and and have themselves represented in the classroom, but also so that when parents come for open house, they can see their students work. That's that's great. Um, You know, I think, um, yeah, I mean, again, you know, relationships are key here for us. And, and that's really what, you know, we're looking for is someone who can build those strong relationships with our students. Um, but we also know that, you know, without, you know, support at home and, and without really a, a strong student teacher, parent or family relationship that, that, you know, um, it's going to be uh, a challenge to, or it's going to be that much harder to support a student's growth. So, you know, think of that same question. It's the first week of school. Um, tell me what you're doing to build relationships with your students' families. I do send a letter home, um, just introducing myself and welcoming them and definitely giving them all the different avenues that they can reach me because I think um, one of the best ways to build relationships with parents is to make yourself available, not like give them my phone number so they can text me available. Um, We use the remind service for that so that they can reach me, but I I do try to make it so that they understand that 
I'm open to communicating with them and hearing any of their concerns. And I also have, it's sort of an assignment that the students are like, what, you're already giving me homework? But it's a student resume that I give them where they outline their school, the schools that they went to previously, because this is middle school. So I want to know where you went, what your what you think you're good at in school and any activities that you do. And then I ask the parents to write a letter of recommendation for their student. So I, I phrase it like your student is applying to be a student in my classroom. Please write a letter of recommendation outlining their personal and academic strengths. And the parents love this. They, they love to brag about their kids. And so this gives me a connection into their lives and, and why they are so proud of their student. And I think they really appreciate um, me reaching out to them that way. That's, um, that's awesome. I'm actually, um, you know, aside from, from what, you know, the podcast, I'm going to write that down as an idea to share <laughs> with my teachers. Actually, I think that's great. And, and a great way to learn about some things that, you know, might not, um, that kids might not think matters in school. Mm -hmm. Um, like, oh, you know, you should see, you know, um, this skill or this talent they have, or here's what I see at home. And I mean, that, that's awesome. I'm going to, I'm going to steal that. Um, so obviously, you know, kind of tying into that, then my last question is, um, uh, you know, how do you, how do you help keep yourself fresh as a teacher? How are you help yourself grow as a learner? Um, what are some things you like to do to support your own professional growth, maybe outside of, you know, the, the required professional development? Right. I think for me, I, I'm always growing and learning and self-reflecting, first of all. And so when I find something that I need to work on, for example, like when I was trying to figure out how to do standards-based grading, I, I take to the internet, I go on Twitter, I go in Facebook groups, I also try to find books on Amazon. So when I wanted standards-based grading, I went to like Ken O'Connor and Rick Formelli. And so I, I read books that I know that I need for a particular area of growth. I know there's a lot of books on general um, educational philosophy and innovation, but for me, it's almost like I'm going to school all the time, so I need subject-specific books. So I do that as well as I also read blogs. I think that I love to pick the minds of other teachers that I respect, and I feel that they kind of keep me on my toes as well because they sort of they they raise the bar. So I like to to read other what other teachers are thinking as well as using social media not you know, just for showing pictures of my daughter and my cat, but also so that I can see what else other people are into, what books are they reading, or um, who are some of the new thought leaders that I should be looking up. So um, I don't attend conferences as much as I would like to, mainly for the cost and time. Mm -hmm. So I just have my own PD that I create for myself. I think, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, um, Twitter has really become like a a game changer for for education. It's so easy to connect with people across, I mean, across the world and, and to learn about what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, I think one thing I have to do a better job of, you know, personally is making sure that I'm not just like, I'm not just taking in ideas on Twitter, but that I'm trying to share ideas as well. Um, you know, because I have to remember, even though like I may not have as many followers as, as someone else, um, I have ideas too, and, and they may help somebody. And, and so you know, instead of letting them sit inside inside my head or even just stay in my little small school here in, in southwest, you know, Charlotte, North Carolina, um, putting them out there, you know, and, and letting other people see them and you know, letting them decide what, what they think of them. But at least I'm, I'm getting it out there and I'm sharing it with them. So I think, you know, I think there's a lot of like, oh, I don't go to conferences. I don't do this. But I mean, I think that, I mean, Twitter is literally a conference every day almost. You know, it's <laughs> I mean, you can you can learn so much from, and not even, you know, not even just like, yes, you can, you can be a part of, of, of Twitter chats and, and things like that, but you don't have to be, you know, um, I know, you know, we already don't have enough downtime as it is. Right. Um, so you don't have to do anything structured. I think there's just so much out there and so much to take in, um, that it's really almost, um, you know, it's really hard. It's really, uh, you know, I mean, Twitter is probably where I would tell people, Hey, start there, you know? Right to read a book, read 280 characters first, you know, and then let that guide you to where you want to go and what you want to learn about. Well, and people suggest really good articles as well. So I don't have time to scour the internet for educational articles, but a lot of times the people I follow on Twitter will 
drop a link to something and I'll be, you know, it'll be something that I really find valuable. So it's definitely, it's so fast moving that it can be hard to keep up with. But, you know, if you do take even just a little bit of time every day, and I tend to lurk more than I post, kind of like what you were saying, like, I don't post enough of my own thoughts. I just like to share other people's thoughts. But I just, I personally get so much out of it. Oh, I agree. I mean, I, I've, I, like I said, you know, I think most of, most of what, what I do, a lot of, a lot of my, you know, questions or, or even ideas are things that, that someone, you know, I, I saw on Twitter. I'm like, Hey, you know, that, that's a great idea. Let me, you know, how can I make that work for my school? Um, and I think one thing that's great about, you know, in general, the education community uh, that's on, um, that's on Twitter is that no one's there to, you know, claim credit for anything. They're just there, you know, the majority of people are there to say, Hey, I'm going to share this because maybe it can help make somebody else's school or someone else's classroom or even just the life of one child that much better. Mm -hmm. Um, So let's put it out there for someone to see if they'd like to use it. Yes, absolutely. Um, Do you have any feedback on my answers or anything that you would like maybe add? Because I'm trying to help my listeners who are going to be going into interviews and maybe they've never interviewed before. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, I think that's the hardest part, right. Is that, um, you know, so, so you and I, you know, when I shared my story, I, I've, I have this, like, uh, this, I don't know what it's called wanderlust or something like I'm always kind of moving around and, um, you know, looking for different opportunities and, you know, and that's given me a, a good opportunity to uh, interview a lot. Right. And the more you interview, the better you get at it. Right. I think it's one of those things that you just get confidence as you do it more and, more people are like, Hey, we're going to give you the job. And you're like, Hey, I, I must be good at this interview. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I mean, I think the first part is making sure, you know, that you come across uh, in an authentic manner. Right. So, um, you know, you definitely did that in, in your first, um, your first answer talking about your story, you know, sharing everywhere you've been and, and kind of, you know, um, even being, you know, I think being honest sometimes, you know, there, there's a, a desire to speak in, in maybe all positive terms. And, you know, and obviously we don't want to be like, Hey, well, that was a, that was a real bad school year, you know, but at the same time, um, you know, sharing real, you know, this, this isn't where I really wanted to be. I really wanted to be doing this. And, um, so I think that that awesome authenticity is really key, um, of, of coming across, uh, you know, and sharing who you are as a real person. Um, you know, I, number two is like the second question I ask about the best lesson is something that that I like to try and see what someone's um, kind of I'll say almost their their north star is like. What are you going to tell me about? Are you going to tell me about a time that um, you know? Oh well, I taught this lesson and the kids got really high test scores. Or are you going to tell me about an experience you created for kids that uh, that made learning you know engaging and, and awesome for them? And and you know, so so I know that's what I'm looking for is I'm looking. For for someone to share with me, um, again, like, what is it that you did that really made the learning, um, awesome for kids. Right. And not that, you know, we want our kids to perform at high levels. Um, but, but sometimes, you know, the things that, that have an impact on students can always be measured with, you know, with tests or, or, um, or even rubrics, you know, I think, I mean, just the experience or, or, you know, just, showing them that they can, they can create something that is going to have an impact on, on people's lives is, um, is crucial. Now for, um, on that second question for a new teacher, maybe yeah. they just got out of student teaching. Would it still be okay if they mentioned a lesson that their, um, cooperating teacher had, had them do, if that makes sense? Like yeah. it wasn't their own lesson. Would that still be acceptable? Yeah. So sometimes, I mean, I'll, so, so some of our teachers now, and I'll kind of say like, Hey, you know, I know, I know you're, you're, this is, your, you know, you're looking for your first teaching job. So, um, you know, either tell me about the best lesson that you've ever taught or tell me about the best lesson you've ever, you know, so the best lesson you've ever seen somebody else teach. Okay. You know, what is it, you know, cause I'm, I'm trying to see like, Hey, what is this person? You know, cause that, that word best is, I mean, that can go in so many different directions. Um, and again, like, you know, th- there's, um, I don't believe that there's a, a scientific approach, although I, I believe there are people out there that'll tell you that, um, you know, I don't believe there's a scientific approach to, um, hiring, you know, to hiring people. I think it's, you know, you, you have to connect with people on a personal level. Um, and so I would say like, I'm looking for someone to share with me, you know, a great experience that's been created for students, whether they did it or whether it was something that had an impact on them. Cause most likely if it had an impact on you, then when you get into the classroom, those are the types of things you're going to do. Right. 
Okay, good. Because I, I'm always thinking of this from the point of view of a new teacher because they, it's not going to be as easy for them to answer some of these questions. Like, for example, in the first one, their answer might be understandably short. Would mm -hmm. you want them to mention non-teaching experience or just focus on what it was like to go through like their credentialing and student teaching program? Yeah, that's always a tough one. And I feel like, you know, for, um, you know, some of the, the, um, you know, kind of just into their, you know, or people looking for their first, um, teaching positions, that's always a hard, that's always a hard question to answer. Cause they're like, well, I graduated from college and now here I am. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but at the same time, like everybody has a story, like no one, I, I, I believe wholeheartedly, nobody ends up, um, no one has become a teacher just because I don't know, they just randomly were like, yeah, I'll be a teacher. Right. Like we're all here because of, of a specific reason, whether it's, you know, um, you know, whether it was, you know, my, you know, when it was me, it was having, you know, a, a teacher in, uh, my junior high school with these like crazy Zubaz, uh, American flag pants. And, and like seeing that when you're a teacher, you get to be, a uh, you know, almost like you can be goofy and fun and engaging and, and still have an impact on kids' lives. Right. And others right. it's, you know, growing up, you know, their whole life knowing they wanted to be a teacher. And as much as I know that that's like a, uh, you know, that's kind of a, a stereotype, like, oh, I've always wanted to be a teacher. And I, I love to hear that because I want to, so why did you always want to be a teacher? And what did that ha lead you to do when you were a child? Like, you know, did, did that cause you as a, you know, as a teenager to take some different, um, you know, to do some different things. So tell me about who you are, because I think the other thing too is um, we want to hear about who people are as people, right? Not just as professionals. So, you know, um, you know, because then I, I also know, like, when I hear those stories, if I know I have a teacher that might have some some way to connect to that teacher. Mm -hmm. Now I can I can match them up, and, and that's a great mentorship opportunity, or even just someone for that teacher to, to feel connected to at first. You right. know, um, I think people forget that sometimes. Like being a new teacher is like being the new student at school. It, it's hard. I remember yeah. my first day. I walked in. I'm like, oh, this is this is like high school, but worse. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. in high school, I mean, I was from a small town, so I knew everybody. So it was completely worse than high school. So yeah. Um, but I, I mean, I think, you know, um, and I think the other part too, is like, as much as I'm interviewing, uh, I'm interviewing someone else, um, you know, I, I try to make it a dialogue because I think they're interviewing us as well, you know, um, depending on where you are, um, you know, it's not like there's only a few jobs, you know, um, you know, we're, we're competing against, um, other, other schools for the same candidates. Right. Yeah. And so. Um, you know, we want them to feel comfortable and, and feel like their their voice is being valued and that, that we're listening to what they're saying and that we care about them more as just a person. Like, I have a vacancy in third grade. This person will fit there. But more as like, hey, this is a great person to come be a part of our school's culture, um, to come be a part of our school community. And are there any specific red flags that you can think of that kind of tell you that maybe this person isn't going to fit your particular school? I mean, I think, you know, um, I try to give the benefit of the doubt sometimes, you know, and so um, my first red flag is if some of, if my teachers feel like they didn't connect with that person, um, you know, that's that's usually when I'm like, OK, that, you know, I, I want to make sure I'm building a, a cohesive, you know, professional learning community amongst these adults. And so, you know, if they feel like, hey, this just wasn't working out, um, you know, I think if if someone, you know, is is speaking more towards the um, the content and the kids, you know, I think mm -hmm. again, like I, I believe wholeheartedly, like I have, we have a ton of people in our district and probably in every district that are, are some of the, the most knowledgeable content based support people there ever was. Um, but I've never seen someone start to like kids who didn't like kids. Right. Um, you know, so I want to see someone who's going to connect with kids because, um, Connecting with kids, connecting with families, that's that's what matters more than anything else. Right. And you can always teach the other stuff to them. Right. I mean, I think I really do believe like I know we're we're kind of making, you know, we're we're simplifying it because, you know, it's not like you can't just teach it all. Like it's not gonna be easy. Um, but I don't believe like if you genuinely don't want to build relationships with students and with families, then I probably can't teach you that. Right. Um, but I can teach you, you know, we can, and make, and I'm also smart enough to know that I might not be the person who can teach it, but I know someone who can, right. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, anybody in, in almost any district, there's going to be, 
I mean, a lot, you know, larger districts, obviously we have, I mean, we have tons of curriculum support. We have people who can come out and, and, and can help them understand, you know, um, unpack the standards and, and the steps they need to take to help students grow and how to analyze where, you know, student learning and decide what the next steps are. Um, but, but, you know, again, I, I mean, I just, I've never really seen someone who didn't like children have someone come out and change their mind. Right. Um, you know, that's, that's a mindset. And so I would say, you know, again, that's a red flag is if, if, you know, um, I'll say like one thing that, that, and this might just be personal preference, but a red flag is, you know, if I ask for, um, if I ask, you know, Hey, what questions you have for us? And, and, you know, one of the, the first questions that comes up is about, you know, student behavior or something like that. Like that's generally, um, that's generally a red flag for me just because I think that, um, you know, what we, what we think about is what we focus on. And right. if we're concerned about students' behavior, we're going to focus on students' behavior. But if we're concerned about students' learning, um, we're going to focus on students' learning, and, and we're not going to have to focus as much on student behavior because, you know, I'm a firm believer that engaged students aren't going to aren't going to you know, um, I guess act out or, or they're talk less out. Like, yeah, they're less likely to definitely. Right. I mean, so so I think that's something that that you know, I'm not looking to 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 really hear that in your interview view here about, you know, about an opportunity to come to our school. Um, but again, I mean, that might be my personal preference. You know, there, there's other people who might say the opposite, you know, um, but, but I really want to hear someone talk about being genuinely, um, I mean, just recognizing the, the amazing, the, the awesome opportunity we get as educators to work with the, the future, you know, the future of our community, the future of our country, um, you know, and to, and to understand that that's not something that, that is, to be taken lightly, um, mm -hmm. you know, that, that we have a really huge role to play in, in developing, I mean, developing someone who's going to take care of this country when, when I'm, you know, when I'm retired, I guess, or, <laughs> yeah. you know, someone who's going to make good decisions and, and take care of me. You know, I want, I want the, the best people helping develop those, those, those kids for the future. Right. You can pass the baton to them and feel good about it. Exactly. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time for this. I think these are awesome questions and my listeners are going to um, definitely appreciate hearing them because they can prepare their answers because there's a lot of anxiety with interviews, as you can imagine, whether or not you're a first year teacher or you're a veteran trying to switch schools. Oh, yeah. No, I, I mean, I agree. And I think, you know, um, one of the things, you know, that that really helped me, you know, as I, um, you know, kind of went through a similar process of, you know, uh, all right, so I want to become a principal. Um, and I have to go to these interviews and, and, you know, I mean, you, you have to prepare, you should prepare, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and think about it ahead of time and, and, you know, practice those answers and, 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 you know, don't, don't read a script, but, but have, have something in your mind about, you know, all right, if they ask me about this, here's what I'm going to go to. And if they ask me about this, here's what I'm going to go to. And, and one thing I encourage, um, you know, I encourage, someone encouraged me to do this, um, not necessarily as a teacher, but, uh, you know, as I was looking for administrative positions, but I think it works for a teacher too, is, you know, don't, don't be afraid to come in with, um, you know, bullet points or, um, you know, s something where you want to make sure like, Hey, these are five things about me that I think are really going to, are going to really set the tone for this, um, or, or to really, you know, kind of make me the best fit for this position. And I want to make sure that I talk about these five things. I, you know, I think that sometimes we're, we're worried that look like, Oh, we're over preparing or, or I guess like it's cheating. Um, but it's really not like, I mean, to me that says, Hey, you, this means a lot to you. You've right. taken your time, um, to really want to, to know, or to really show me that you deserve this opportunity. And, and so to me that that's like a sign of, of almost respect for our school that you're that invested in this process. Well, thank you again, Rick, for being on the podcast. I really appreciate the time that you've taken to, ask me these questions and, and talk about your school. Um, if people wanted to connect with you and learn more about you and your school, where can they reach you? Yeah. So, um, well, you can check out more about Wingate Park Elementary um, at our website. So it's it's pretty easy. It's just www.wingetpark.com. Mm -hmm. um, here, here in North Carolina, there is uh, what I would call Wingate um, but which is pronounced winged as well. So um, they sometimes get those confused. Okay. Um, our school, our school Twitter is uh, at uh, CMS underscore winged park. Mm -hmm. um, and then my personal Twitter is at Maureen. So M O H R I E N. Well, there you go. That was such an awesome conversation that I had with Rick. 
And I have some key takeaways that I wanted to talk to you guys about. First of all, principals are looking for teachers that genuinely like kids and who can build relationships with students, parents, and with their colleagues. So they're less concerned with your actual teaching skills and knowledge, especially if you're a beginning teacher, because all of those can be taught. What they can't teach you is how to like kids. Some additional advice that Rick gave us is that you should be prepared with some possible answers when you come to an interview. And it would be even better if you had about maybe like five points about yourself that you want to make sure that you tell them that show that you're the best fit for this position. So somehow weave those five points into your answers so that you can showcase your awesomeness and be authentic and your real self in an interview. They want to get a sense that you're human and that you can connect with others. So just show who you really are as much as you can through that nervousness. Finally, one thing that I really like about the mission that they have at Wingate Park is that to them, teaching is more than just getting kids to read, write, and do math. They want kids to learn the soft skills needed to be successful in the workforce, such as working well with others. So once again, thank you so much for spending the time with me today. I know that this is going to be very valuable for you. And there is one more episode after this in the job interview series. And Today, this is released on a Monday, so come back on Thursday so that you can get that final interview. And honestly, all of these interviews and the questions from them are really going to round out your experience so that you're going to just be completely prepared for when you walk into that interview. That's all I want. I want you to feel confident, be prepared so that you can nail that job. After you go into these interviews, I would love to hear back from you in terms of how it went, especially if you use some of these questions to practice for them. So please email me at kim at teachersneedteachers.com. Have a fabulous week, you guys.